line structures, skeletal structures, bond line structures, line angle formulas. These are all different names for the same thing. This method of drawing organic molecules. Line structures are useful if you want to draw molecules with lots of carbons and lots of hydrogens. Let me give you an example. If a molecule is classified as a steroid, it has a very particular structure in which four rings of carbons are bonded to each other in a very particular pattern. I'm drawing the line structure for the generic part of a steroid right now. As you can see, I drew it fairly quickly while I was talking. Now I'm going to speed up the next part of this video, but I want to draw the Lewis structure of this same thing just so you can see how much faster this really was. Let's go over the rules for drawing line structures. So this is a molecular model of octane. This is its line structure. Octane has eight carbons in a chain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and a total of 18 hydrogens in yellow. So the first carbon and the last carbon each have three hydrogens. All of the carbons in the middle have two hydrogens. So here are our rules for drawing this line structure. Rule one, the lines are carbon-carbon bonds. In other words, each of these lines is a bond between carbons. That means the very beginning and end of each line and each vertex represents a carbon. So this is showing eight carbons in a chain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Rule two, do not show C for carbon or H for hydrogen directly bonded to a carbon. So you are not seeing the symbols C or H anywhere in this structure. Rule three, carbon prefers to make four bonds. So assume the appropriate number of hydrogens are present. So this very first carbon, you are seeing a single bond to another carbon, but that carbon has four bonds. The drawing is only showing one. Those other three bonds are bonds to hydrogens. So this first carbon, you are seeing three hydrogens on it. The second carbon, you are seeing single bonds to two carbons. It also likes to make a total of four bonds, so it needs to have two hydrogens on it. That is going to continue throughout the molecule you assume the appropriate number of hydrogens are present to meet the octet rule. And rule four, symbols for other elements and hydrogens on other elements are shown. So if this was an alcohol and there was an OH group on it somewhere, you would still need the O for oxygen and the H, the hydrogen on the oxygen. One more detail that's usually not specifically written, but just how things are done, is that this zigzag shape is supposed to closely resemble the zigzag shape of the actual molecule. So in my last video, I took this molecular model of octane and I rotated each and every carbon-carbon bond to put it in its most stable conformation. We ended up with this zigzag shape. This is also how people typically draw line structures. Let's do some practice problems converting between Lewis structures and line structures. So this is a molecule called 1-bromobutane. So carbon one has a bromine and two hydrogens. Carbon two has two hydrogens. Carbon three has two hydrogens. Carbon four has three hydrogens. So we need to draw those four carbons in a chain in line structure format like this. And remember that elements other than carbons and hydrogens, we need to actually show their symbol. So carbon one, we need to show the bond to the bromine. So this is the line structure for the same molecule. Problem two, I have Lewis structures drawn for cis-2-butene and trans-2-butene. These molecules are very similar to each other, but let's take a closer look at this molecular model so we can see how they are different. So this is cis-2-butene. We have four carbons in a chain, one, two, three, four, but there is a double bond between carbons two and three. The important thing to know is that double bonds and triple bonds cannot freely rotate. So when we were talking about conformations and single bonds rotating, that was only true of single bonds. Cis and trans 2-butene both have a double bond and it does not freely rotate. If you want more information about the difference between conformations and isomers, I do have a video about that topic. 
but cis and trans 2-butene are isomers of each other. So this bond cannot rotate. So in cis 2-butene, my two larger groups, my two CH3 groups, are both on the same side as the double bond. If I want to convert this to trans 2-butene, it's not a simple rotation. I need to physically take this molecular model apart and put it together differently. So trans 2-butene, we now have our two large groups on opposite sides of the double bond. So cis 2-butene, I need to draw the double bond as two lines, but the two large groups, the two CH3 groups, are on the same side. Cis means same side of the double bond, so they either need to both be up or both be down. Trans 2-butene, these are on opposite sides. So I still need to draw double bond as a double line, but the two larger groups, the two CH3 groups, are now on opposite sides of my double bond. So cis and trans 2-butene do need to be drawn differently. Problem three. This is a Lewis structure for 2-methylcyclohexanol. Let's draw the line structure. So we have six carbons in a ring. One, two, three, four, five, six. So let's draw that. Carbon number one has an OH group. Carbon two has a methyl group, a CH3 group. So carbon one, I need to draw OH. Carbon two, I need a line for a methyl group. This is our line structure. Now let's do some practice problems in the reverse direction. So I'm starting with a line structure. I want to draw a Lewis structure. The first thing you should do is figure out what your backbone is. In other words, carbon, 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 nitrogen, carbon. Let's start with that. Now let's figure out what else is bonded to each of these atoms. So the nitrogen has a lone pair of electrons and a hydrogen. And we have a carbon with a chlorine on it, but we need to make sure it's the correct carbon. So let's count. One, two, three. Three carbons away from our nitrogen. One, two, three. This carbon has a chlorine. And you need to assume that this molecule has as many hydrogens as it needs, so that each and every carbon has a total of four bonds. So just add as many hydrogens as you need, then you're done. Next problem. I wanted to show you an example with a triple bond. So this is a line structure for 2-pentyne. Let's take a closer look at this molecular model. I have five carbons in a chain. One, two, three, four, five. I have a triple bond between carbons two and three. Remember when I told you that you need to draw the angles of line structures in a way that closely represents the actual angles of the molecule? Well, here we have 180 degree angles. The angle between carbon 1, 2, and 3 is 180 degrees. Angle between carbon 2, 3, and 4 is 180 degrees. It's not until we get to 3, 4, and 5 that you see our normal 109.5 degree angle. That means these four carbons are all in a straight line. So our line structure shows them as a straight line. Let's look at this line structure again and number our carbons. When you are trying to figure out the locations of the carbons, it is not just beginning and end of the line and the vertices, it would also be beginning and end of any of the triple bonds. So carbon locations are one, two, three, four, five. Now let's draw a Lewis structure. So I have five carbons in a chain, triple bond between carbons two and three. Now I just need to add as many hydrogens as we need so that each carbon has a total of four bonds. So notice that on carbons 2 and 3, I did not need to add any hydrogens. Four bonds were already described just by their bonds with carbons. In my next video, I'm going to be tying balloons together to explain bond angles within molecules. This would be Vesper theory, valence shell electron pair repulsion. Thanks for watching Chemistry in a Nutshell. If you feel that I've earned it, please like this video and subscribe to my channel.